Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm Robert Sherwood, and we're going to take you along on a job in Oakland Township, Michigan. We're going to show you how we ran the roof runoff water further away from the house, as well as we ran French drains on three sides of a backyard to help tighten it up where kids play. Right there was a pop-up. We want to run that all the way down here to where our French drain begins or ends, however you want to look at it. And there's a trampoline that goes here. So I wanted to branch off the main and dry this up and tighten it up so that the kids aren't playing on, you know, ground that's muddy, soft, you know, squishy. There's our basin. So remember that just takes in storm water. We're going to also take this pop up and we're going to extend it down to our French drain system. Get that water right to where it needs to go because remember when water is let go in the grass, it's so hard to gather. So you want to just take it all the way down to your French drain and or the storm drain. This is all French drain right here and it's typical right along the side property to do kind of like a T. The homeowner planted a couple of trees and it was all clay and cobble rock and we actually just hauled that away for them. So this is literally the worst ground we work. Oakland Township and probably Oxford, Michigan are the two worst ground as far as actual clay, big cobble rock mix. It doesn't get any worse than that. So here's an aerial so you guys can see what we got going on here. You can see we we built a plywood road off the driveway and we have a French drain across the back with all those feeder pipes where the trampoline goes. And you can see that the French drain winds in a low swale. The, the swale itself has that meander. That's why we have like a serpentine looking French drain back there. So we're going to tighten this yard up and we're going to dry it up really, really nice so the kids can play. The homeowner loves to have a beautiful, beautiful, lush lawn. And in order to have a really green, beautiful, lush lawn, especially in 90 degree temps, you know, here we are in summer and it's super, super hot, you do have to water frequently. So your yard better be set up to drain properly so that these swales aren't just complete mud and a mess for your pets and your children. So I'm going to show you guys how to go about that so that you can just run your sprinklers during July, August, these these drought months, these hottest the hottest times of the year. We're going to show you how to tighten that yard up, how to move the excess water from your watering as well as storm water. This is this is going to serve the homeowner well through spring and fall during the wettest times of the year right there that's a downspout pipe not a french drain pipe that's a downspout pipe that they're pulling and they're getting it into the trench of the french drain so that's our new high octane heavy duty so we call it our high octane hd solid we're going to run that just put a pop-up over all the stone that we're going to put in there. We're not going to tie it into our French drain. We never tie it into our French drain pipe directly because it'll fill it full of shingle gravel, leaves, and debris, and it'll just build up with organic material and be a problem. So let's get you on the ground now that you are familiar with the job site and how it looks. I want to teach the DIY for their own projects as well as the contractor who's going to do many Matter of fact, he's basically trying to perfect his craft. And whether you're a contractor or a DIYer, this rule stands true. You want to be very organized from A to Z. The whole project goes better and it's more economical, which is very important if you're a business owner and you're offering this service. I know there's a lot of guys that subscribe to our channel and they're picking up on little tricks of the trade, which is exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. I want to leave the industry better than I found it. And that's my goal is to help you guys get better at doing this. So we build our road in. You guys have seen this before. I don't think we show it enough. You just got to be methodical about it. Trust me, the time you take right here is going to save you three times the amount of time at the back end of the job because it's going to make it come together so quick and I'm going to explain that in this video along with so many other things this video is going to have just a lot of value to the homeowner 
to the DIYer and to the contractor. So they are talking about, hey, we, we got to cut the sod off the system. We got to lay the plywood to where it makes sense. You only want to move the plywood once because, you know, it's it is labor. You, you are working to you know, move these pieces of plywood and you want to put them exactly where the ditch which will go. Now, think about this when you're cutting your sod. Notice they cut the sod and now it's just in manageable sizes and they're putting it off to the side, but it's off to the side and out of the way of the ditch witch and the track hoe. So be organized, be methodical, be detailed. The project will go well. It'll go with less labor. It'll go with less cost if you're a contractor. And if you're a homeowner, a DIYer, I promise you, your job will be easier It'll be smooth from A to Z. You'll enjoy it, and it'll be one less trip to the chiropractor because if you do it this way, it's real easy. It's real easy to not follow these steps and kind of end up painting yourself into a corner and creating like twice as much work for yourself is what I'm trying to say. So the guys cut the sod, and notice how they're not rolling it up because it's 90 degrees and it'll just cook. If you roll sod up, it literally cooks like compost does. I mean, it just steams. It steams it and it kills it in just a matter of hours. Not to mention, it's just easier to handle when it's in manageable pieces. So as you can tell, everybody knows their job on this crew. They know it well. You know, have one guy cutting the sod. One guy's going ahead and he's chopping the sod in manage manageable pieces. We got a third guy who's picking it up, putting it aside. And they're not going to have to move that sod two or three or four times. That's what's beautiful about it. It'll stay right there off to the side until it's time to put it on top of the burrito wrap. So think about that. You're not handling the plywood but once. You're not handling the sod but once. I mean, that's key. If I learned anything in 35 years of excavation, urban and suburban and rural, you only want to handle dirt. You only want to handle turf grass. Whatever it is, you only want to handle it one time. The more times you handle anything, the more money you lose and the more time it's going to take for you to get out of that job. So keep that in mind. That's why we put the clay with the cobblestone this is terrible ground here in Oakland Township, Michigan. Oakland Township, Michigan is a high-rent district. It's beautiful. So, I mean, don't confuse the fact that they have some of the worst ground we work, clay cobblestone mix. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful there. You know, deer are running through the backyard and everything. It's kind of a, it's a neat place. And um, and we absolutely love it. It's a, it, it really is a, an honor to work for the residents of Oakland Township, Michigan. That's for sure. So we're cutting the sod right now so that we could extend the length of that pop up for the roof runoff water and get it all the way down to our French drain system. And we're going to dig that out with our track hole. We will. We're not going to use a trencher. We want to make sure that we have it deep enough to where it's not too shallow and honestly, when you're digging in ground like this, the track hoe is your best bet. So I know a lot of guys use trenchers and then, you know, you leave the homeowner's yard a mess. They have to, you know, call in their landscaper to, you know, sod it. And the whole thing is sad. A trencher buzzes through all the sprinkler lines. So it makes a bigger mess of the sprinkler lines, easier to miss sprinkler lines. And now you got to call your sprinkler company, the homeowner a lot of times is left with a lot of extra costs when they hire these guys that just use a trencher and they buzz through everything because they got to bring in their sprinkler company afterwards to do all these repairs, these very costly repairs. So when we're digging with our track hole, we actually can see the line. You know, you, you've seen our videos before. If you subscribe to this channel, we have a spotter in the trench. And when he sees a sprinkler line, he cuts it and says, okay, keep moving. So now we know where it's at. We pull it back, we mark it, and we repair it once we get our French drain system in. So I just wanted to be thorough on how to lay out your job. Be methodical about where you put your plywood. Be methodical about 
what side the plywood is of your trench. Think about that because you got to lay your sod somewhere. So you want to be able to lay your sod out of the way. And yeah, so that took some time. You know, the, the, the setup, the setup, always staging a job is going to be time consuming. But if you do it right, you're going to save a crazy amount of time afterwards on the back end of the, any installation. So we're putting the clay this clay mixed with cobble on plywood. That's going to go back in because this is only a solid pipe. This is not a perforated pipe with stone. This is not part of the French drain system. This is a part of the roof runoff system. So they're going to put the dirt to make it easy just to slide the dirt with the track hole off the plywood over top of the solid pipe with no perforations and no stone. So that's what that's what the guys are doing. So look at that. The track hoe is on the plywood so we don't damage the turf grass. And then the track hoe is putting the dirt right on that plywood for easy cleanup. Again, saving time, saving time. You don't want to be handling this dirt more than once. I mean, yes, you lift it up, you put it right close to where you're going to need it, which is right back in that trench. So, and we'll show more of that later, of course, but very methodical and the spotter, he's looking for sprinkler lines, anything else. Dog, We had a dog fence on this uh, boundary line that we had to deal with, and we usually just cut those, pull them out of the way, and then when we're done, we put them back together. It's pretty simple. Everything is just adult Legos to us. I mean, wire, plastic, poly, you know, sprinkler lines, all that, it's not a big deal. But I'll tell you what is a big deal. If you hook it with a track hoe, and you pull on that sprinkler pipe it'll come off a fitting from 40 feet away i've seen it i've done it and it's a nightmare to figure out where the heck it came from so that's why it's so important to spot those sprinkler lines in the trench so you can go ahead and just cut them with a shovel or cut them with a, a knife if you if you carry a box knife um, or pruners works too if, if we're in a yard with a lot of roots we'll use pruners so that swing set right there to the right, you can see the the wood timbers and everything. I want to talk about that while we're right here in this corner and, and you could see it. So you have a neighbor who put these timbers around his swing set and then put the bark mulch in. That's for safety for the children and to keep it from being muddy. But I'll tell you what, here's that corner that every that they were working in. So now we're in we got some drone footage for you. That play area that's elevated, after a big heavy rain, it will just slowly, slowly lose all that water. It's going to soak up water like a sponge. And the corner of the corner of the lot that we're working on, it's going to end up always being wet. And then homeowners are like, why is this always wet? Well, this higher elevation over here of all this bark mulch and material, it's saturated and it's holding water and it loses water not in hours but it takes days and days and days for that play area to dry out so i see that all the time whether it's elevated patios you know elevated play areas elevated landscape beds so we're on the ground over here and i wanted this to give you an on the ground look at everything we got the main we got the feeder pipes where the trampoline goes we stayed in the swale the swale meandered in this yard. We have some roof runoff water we're managing properly. We want to be responsible with that water too. So now it's time to core the storm drain. But it doesn't take the whole team to core a storm drain. If you notice, everybody's got a certain specialty. It's interesting because I don't assign who does what. The crew figures that out. After you have been working together for some time, contractors know this you put a good group of men together and you don't have to tell them what to do they will figure out who's best at what there won't be an argument there won't be any fighting it'll be simple the guy that's very very good and swift at something he'll that'll be his job like you'll always see francisco core and you know before francisco did the cores you would always see Marcelo core. He was pretty good too. Now, Valente, he's just been excellent as far as a spotter in the trench. 
he does a great job of making the bottom of the trench perfectly flat. Why do you want a perfectly flat trench? If you leave a high spot in your trench, the water can't drain out. So picture that. You have a three-inch hump in the bottom of your trench. Upstream, you're going to have three inches of water laying in the whole system. Now the trees, shrubs, they're going to sniff that out. They're going to fill your system full of roots. So you want the bottom of your trench to be crazy smooth. You want to really be conscientious of that. You don't want to just hog out dirt and just leave it like all bumpy and up and down because that's how you end up with roots and tree roots and shrub roots. If there's water laying in the bottom of your system, those plants just by nature, they can sniff that out. Now, Francisco, he's fantastic in this track hoe. He spends enough time in this machine to where he's razor sharp. I mean, he literally could scratch your back with this thing, and I'm not kidding. He's fantastic. I, I cannot praise him enough for his abilities in this machine. He's really one with the machine. It's like an extension of his body. So a lot everybody can run it. I can run it, but I know better. I, as a business owner, you keep the guy who's in the machine all the time and is sharp, razor sharp, doing what he's best at. So I mark out the systems. I lay out the systems. You know, I basically just, I'm the dental floss that kind of bounces around, ties it all together, holds it all together. You know, but we have guys that are just trained to do specific things and they're well-rounded too. Like I said, everybody in this crew obviously could run this track hole, but you know, it's what Francisco does best. So happy to have him. He's been with me for a re really, really long time and to many more years with Francisco. That's for sure. So this is his project. This is his job. You know, Francisco's the lead man this year on everything. I mean, he's he took the, the bull by the horns. I'm telling you, this guy, he's changed. He's changed how much we can do in a day. I, I'm blown away by just how many how many linear feet of French drain we're getting in per day because this guy, he leads by example. He'll jump off that machine and do something before he'll ask somebody to do it, and I love that about him. And uh, he's just an overall uh, great person to begin with. Notice how Valente cleans off the plywood. He, When there's dirt that spills... They don't walk over it and stomp on it and, and get it to where it's compacted on the plywood and a pain to deal with later. If a bunch of dirt falls on the plywood, and it does all the time, when you break clay, breaking clay, let's talk about that real quick. So we got a 9-inch bucket, but how is it that we're digging a 18-inch wide trench 16 inches deep? Okay, that 9-inch bucket, it bites into the clay and then the clay breaks out and you always end up with this giant scoop that's hanging over both sides of the bucket. And that's why people get in trouble. They say, Hey, I want to do a trench that's 14 inches wide. They'll put a 14 inch bucket on Well, a 14 inch bucket. When clay breaks out like this, you're going to end up with like a 22 inch wide trench. So be careful DIYers when you rent equipment just ask for the 9 inch bucket unless you just want a really good drain because you know my rule the more stone and pipe the better the French drain. And why is that? Well, if you use large stone, you have large voids. You got a lot of air moving through your system. The more air you have moving through your system, the more water you can move those voids that have air the water moves through them during a big rain event. So does the high octane. It has air and water moves through it. Same way. So we put a lot of high octane in all our jobs. Like this one ended up with three pipes of high octane and then inch and a half cobble on top of that with big voids. Now, this is something that's not talked about enough. And people have to know this. They have to understand this. The reason why our drains work so well, the reason why our drains work so much better than everybody else's, when you have three high-octane pipes, you know, the yard drain perforated high-octane pipes in a French drain with a bunch of inch-and-a-half round rock, preferably round rock, not crushed, you end up with so much air. There's so much air. So think about that. 
this system is only working what maybe one um, percent of the time as far as during a hard rain event the rest of the time what is it doing it's venting the yard drying out your yard the bigger the system the more air you're moving through the system the faster you dry out the ground in your backyard that's simply put people always call the office and they're asking the girls in the office before they buy their products online at our online store they're trying to figure out do i build a quad pack do i run one pipe do i run two pipes what do i do and what does it all mean well simply put the more high octane you run in your french drain and the bigger stone you put in your french drain the more air you're going to have the more venting and the faster your yard will dry out after a rain of course our system's going to take care of all your water you know during a torrential rain but afterwards you want it to dry out your yard and tighten it up quick you don't want to go through days and days of having a yard that's soft and muddy and squishy and all that stuff especially if you got dogs and children or if you like to enjoy your yard and and again you can see how clean the plywood is you know valente was just scraping all that dirt off as it was falling off of the track hole bucket and he did a great job you know it's going to make cleanup really easy matter of fact Here's another drone shot. You can see where we got the dirt on the plywood for the downspout. You can see where the fabric starts because that's where the French drain starts because you're not going to see fabric with the roof runoff. Those are solid pipes. So we got high octane, heavy duty. We call it the high octane HD solid for the roof runoff system. And then we got the high octane perforated pipe eight slot. Our high octane eight slot has 17 and a quarter square inches of inlet per linear foot. It's the most in the industry. Nothing even comes close. There's not even a close second. So here we are getting ready to dig another portion of the system. So they're doing, doing this very methodically. They're working their way out of the yard with the dig. And we have one downspout left to dig and bring it up to the French drain system. Valente, he's in the trench. That line, that, that serpentine line in the valley of this backyard, the swale, it's dug out. It's, all the dirt is hauled off site. None of it goes back in, not a single you know shovel full. Uh, we will take a blower. We'll use a, a leaf blower to blow off the plywood you know, before we put the fabric in and then that way that the plywood's nice and clean and easy to stack. And when you uh, disassemble your road and back out of your job and move to another job, it just makes it just more economical and it's just so much easier. And you don't have plywood that weighs double because you got all this dirt that you drove over and you got clay smashed on it. And, you know, I, I speak from experience you just don't wake up one day and you're building the best yard drains in the world. You know, you're literally setting all the standards and you're driving, you know, all the uh, handymen crazy because you're showing people how to build a really, really good French drain that lasts forever. I mean, there's guys that are going to say, hey, here's a drain for $15. Um, this is a quick fix. Here's a hack. I mean, well, the keywords there, hack, you know, life hack, a drain hack, $15 fix, and they don't last. I mean, water problems are not something that you want to just put a temporary fix on. Water problems are something that you want to take care of. You want to manage your roof runoff water. You want to manage your yard water. You want to do it responsibly so that you never have to live a flooded basement or a mold or mildew problem. That's going to probably be an issue to a member of the family's respiratory system because over half the people in the United States are allergic to mold and mildew. And Remember, when you open up your windows on that beautiful you know, summer day, that fresh air, if you don't take care of your water problems, it's not so fresh. You have mold and mildew spores that come into your home and then when your eyes swell when your eyes are puffy and watery and your nose is runny what does everybody say oh these these uh, spring pollen uh, these spring allergies that's what they call them you know the pollen they blame the pollen the, the or dust or many other things and what we're finding out is it's mold and mildew you know over half the people in the United States are allergic to mold and mildew and it's 
it's not healthy for us. We now know that. That's why they are, there's companies that come in, and if we were there and we saw that there was mold and mildew on a structure, we would notify the client, say, bring in a company that mediates mold and mildew and clean this up and get it out of here, you know, so that it's not a health concern to your family. So be vigilant, and obviously if you're managing your roof runoff water and you're managing your backyard water, you're not going to have those problems because your basement is not going to be as musty. My clients tell me all the time, I always thought Michigan basements were just musty until we had a system put in by you guys. Now that we're managing our roof runoff water and our yard water, the basement is not musty anymore. Well, that, that's because the downspouts used to pour too close to the foundation of the house and the yard used to sit so wet that the sump pump inside the basement would just recirculate water basically so here's a walkthrough now that we have it fully dug i went ahead and just walked through it real quick for you guys again the dirt that's on the plywood that's because that's a solid pipe that's just for a roof runoff there's not going to be fabric or stone there we're going to put that dirt right back over the solid hd our high octane heavy duty yard drain pipe so we're going to finish putting the fabric in. You can see how we got the main across the backyard. These L-shaped French drains, they're very common. You go across the back, and then you got to usually go 20 feet as you go up. You know, the grade increases as you go towards the house. It's pretty wet back there the first 15, 20 feet, so most of my systems usually have like an L shape. And then the reason why I did three additional feeders into this main was because there's going to be a trampoline there. That's where they put the trampoline. And it's always so wet because the neighbor's swing set, remember right there where you see those wood timbers and the wood bark in your lower left-hand corner, that is an elevated play area that the neighbor put in. So not only is it in the swale, so it's compromising drainage period, but it's going to catch all that water, absorb it like a sponge, and then slowly it's going to always have water running out of it. Look at all the high octane we have in there. We got all that perforated high octane eight slot. This system's going to rip, man. This system's going to rip. Not only is it going to move water, you know, storm water in, in the cases of a, a big rain event, but it's going to have such great circulation. It's going to dry this yard out after after watering it. You know, you want to keep a nice green lush lawn in the 90 degree heat? No problem. Run those sprinklers hard because afterwards there's going to be so much air moving through this system. It's just going to tighten that yard up. It's going to keep it from getting soft and muddy. So they're working their way out of this job, as you can see. I mean, very methodically. You can see the dirt is no longer on that plywood either. They went ahead and pushed the dirt in with the track hoe, and the little bit of excess that's there, they'll scoop it up right now. The pipe does take up some volume in that trench, so there'll be a little dirt. You know, that's not much. A few wheelbarrows that they'll haul away. And they're getting really, really close to buttoning this up. Before you know it, you know, they're going to have all the fabric pinned, cut, and all you got to do is lay the sod right back over it. Now, we do have a special sod cutter. And if you are a regular subscriber that sees a lot of our videos, you know that. It does cut really, really thick. And the reason why we do that is we want to get a few inches of soil with that turf grass so that it can grow just fine over top of the fabric. Now, remember, the roots are going to grow through this fabric because we have it punched twice. It's a double punch fabric, and it doesn't work its best until the roots grow through it because then the water follows the roots of the grass plant right into the stone. Okay, so everybody always wants to know, what did that job run you? You know, like, what, what did that job cost the client? What did you charge? Uh, this is a $6,500 install. It's a job that we got done in a day. We would have done this and a smaller job had it not been, you know, in the 90s. I don't want to work my crew in heat like that and push them hard because it's early in the season still. We're only halfway through, a lot of season left. But I want to take you guys on a walkthrough, and I want to show you guys, like, this job, you know, after we took the blower and fluffed up the grass. And I, we really do. I mean, we, we try to leave 
like zero. There he is. He's he was fluffing up the grass with that blower. Okay, so remember we we had the the driveway. We drove up the driveway and we started building our plywood road. We had a drain in the meandering swale, and we really put in a lot of pipe over by that swing set in the far right corner because it's the whole problem that that corner was just so bad to begin with and the trampoline goes there. But let's do a walkthrough. All right, we're gonna do a walkthrough. The crew is, the crew is on their way back to the yard. Everything's put back together the way, the way we found it. So we extended that downspout because the water, it just has trouble finding its way. There is a little bit of slope and there's a defined swale, but everything was just so wet in here. So we went ahead and we took a pop-up emitter that was here and we extended it out 25 feet. You know, help give that water a chance like here again you know it's very it's very wet in here you can see there was a pop-up right there where that little piece of grass is missing that's when i say we put things back together the way we found it that's how we do it no kidding so we ran this pop-up all the way to the back of the yard once you catch the water once the water is caught coming down the downspout you don't want to let it go because then you're trying to gather it in here just get it back here now we have a heck of a system back here we have those four runs we got the main right here and those feeders coming in the trampoline is going to be here whenever you do something like this you have to treat the sod that you cut off like new sod. So you're going to have to water. You're going to have to water as if it was new sod for a couple weeks. You know, it's 90 degrees now here in Michigan. And, you know, this stuff will burn on the edges. And once it's cooked, man, it takes three times as long to knit together. So here was another run. There was a pop-up right here from that corner and it went under it worked it was fine so we extended it right there and we have our French drain under it it's not tied into our French drain you guys if you subscribe if you're a regular subscriber and watch all our stuff you know we Never tie a downspout into a French drain pipe because it'll fill full of shingle gravel, leaves, and debris. Organic material eventually one day to plug the pipe. So we just set them on top. So we did a French drain across the backyard with some feeders. We stayed right in the low point. That's the collection area. That's how you're going to dry a yard out. Water always finds the lowest point. Now, on the property line here, we did a T. And then, yeah, there, there's a pop-up right up here. And the water just flows right into our French drain. So this is the after. This is not the before. This is the after. Full service. We don't come in and tear up your sprinkler system, tear up your sod, leave your yard where you have to seed, call in your landscaper, we're full service. It takes a lot to pull off a job like this. We came in very swiftly, clean. We want to leave the neighborhood as we had found it. We wanna come in, we want our footprint when we leave, we, we don't want to leave a footprint. What you see, this is every install. This is the after on the same day. 
And if it wasn't, you know, 90 degrees, we'd go do another job. But I don't like to, I don't like to burn the guys out. You know, we still got a lot of season left. You know, here we are going, going into July, and we still got a lot of season left. So no reason to uh, start pushing like that. I'll wait till the cooler weather to start pushing hard again. But that's it, man. I want to thank Oakland Township, Michigan for having us again. And we always look forward to working in Oakland Township, Michigan. All right, guys. Until the next video.